A REPORT RELEASED LAST YEAR BY A STATEWIDE ENVIRONMENTAL ADVOCACY GROUP FOUND WESTERN NEW YORK RANKED AMONG THE TOP AREAS FOR SEWAGE OVERFLOWS. Now, THESE OVERFLOWS HAPPEN SO OFTEN BECAUSE LOCAL WASTEWATER TREATMENT PLANTS CAN'T HANDLE THE DEMAND. AND AS NEWS FOR'S DAVE GRABER TELLS US, THIS PROBLEM IS ONLY GETTING WORSE AND THE COST TO FIX IT IS ASTRONOMICAL. DAVE? Well, Don, our waterways turn toxic hundreds of times every year in western New York. Heavy or even moderate rains force billions of gallons of partially or untreated sewage into our creeks, streams, and rivers. What's even more troubling, as you just mentioned, there's barely enough money available to keep up with such a serious and common health hazard, let alone fix it. These pools at the Niagara Falls wastewater treatment plant provide workers one final look at what eventually ends up in the Niagara River. On July 29, 2017, the water flowing over this dam suddenly turned jet black after human error and outdated equipment led to the release of carbon in raw sewage and the foul mixture clouded the river at the peak of tourist season. We've had a few incidents that were, uh, you know, something that nobody ever wanted to see. Dan O'Callaghan was the chairman of the Niagara Falls Water Board at the time of last summer's now infamous release. Although the overflow made international headlines, it was only a fraction of the 144 million gallons of untreated or partially treated sewage that spilled from Niagara Falls plant that month alone. What continues to happen in Niagara Falls is a regular occurrence at every wastewater treatment plant in western New York and across the state. Overflows are a reality, a byproduct of outdated plants and pipes, and there is no end in sight to their toxic release into our waterways. Like most wastewater treatment facilities, the plant in Niagara Falls cannot handle the demand of weather and population. The place is antiquated, the equipment's failing, uh, we have a lot of issues here. In Niagara Falls, it takes just a half inch of rain over the span of 10 hours to cause an overflow. And they are not alone. In October, a single weather event led to overflows at nearly every plant in western New York. The biggest culprit, heavy rains, which allow runoff from streets and fields to mix with raw sewage and then bypass wastewater plants and flow untreated directly into creeks and rivers. In 2012, the state enacted the Sewage Pollution Right to Know Act, which orders municipalities to disclose through various means potential contamination from sewage overflows. While the act was intended to increase transparency and protect the public, it also revealed a much deeper problem. The state's wastewater infrastructure is sorely outdated. Between 2013 and 2015, Western New York reported the most overflows in the state, with 1,825, accounting for an estimated 57 million gallons of raw sewage dumped into local waterways. During the same period, municipalities in Erie County accounted for nearly 58 percent of all overflows reported statewide. The region of Western New York is the largest contributor of overflows in the state, accounting for 68 percent of the state's total reports. Like the treatment plant in Niagara Falls, Buffalo's facility has been outdated for decades. There are 200 overflow points throughout Buffalo's 850-mile pipe system. Today, it's estimated that Buffalo's system alone discharges more than 4 billion gallons of untreated water into the Niagara River and its tributaries every year. You'll get those things that you see, you know, on the ground, anything from leaves to trash um, to those things that people really shouldn't be flushing down, down the toilet that will float. Um, those are the things that historically go into combined sewer overflow. So anything from pop bottles to unmentionables. Built in 1939 and updated in the 1970s, the massive plant accepts sewage from the city, Cheektowaga, Amherst, Tonawanda, and more. In fact, overflows from Cheektowaga are the biggest contributor to Skajakwita Creek's label as an impaired waterway. It really is about managing the problem because what we're ultimately talking about here is water quality. Um, so we need to manage it to a point where water quality is not affected, and that is our aim, that is our goal. Now, 2017 was undoubtedly a difficult year for the Niagara Falls Water Board, but they're taking steps to improve the relationship with the public. In fact, just this week, they announced a new initiative intended to bring residents, business owners, and city leaders into the conversation. And when it comes to these facilities and our water supply, these conversations are absolutely critical. Now, interestingly enough, coming up tonight on News 4 at 11, we're going to talk more about this topic, also how this problem is being addressed, and how much is really needed to just maintain these plants that are falling apart by the day and essentially why there's really no money to fix the problem. Conversation? Completely. I'll give you a conversation. Fix.
the problem. It's going to cost billions. Yep. Huge. Huge. Thank you, Dave. We'll Good look job. for your report at 11. Now, if you have an issue you'd like us to look into, send an email to nysuncovered at wivb.com.